All right, we are here in the coaches' conversation. We did one of these, I believe it was right before uh, all the tournaments during the we were in the quarantine and everything was crazy, still crazy. Uh, but now that we've played some seasons, some tournaments, and a whole bunch of stuff. So we have Tab Ramos, Houston Dynamo FC head coach, and James Clarkson, Houston Dash head coach here uh, to talk to you guys. How are you guys doing? Uh, good. Very good. Thanks. Yeah, very good. Nice, nice to be back. <laughs> well, thank you guys for doing this. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick this off and then let you guys uh, kind of run with it. You have some questions to, to ask and to help conversate. But I'm going to start. I'm going to start with you, Tab, and just say we're going to start with 2021 and say how's preparations for 2021 going for you? Uh, good. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of planning, a lot of a lot of uh, pieces that have to fall into places, but they all can start with one, and then so then you can you can work on others. Uh, so yeah, it's a slow process, but we're doing all we can. James, how about you? Yeah, it's very similar. It's uh, it's 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 never easy when you know when you're trying to trade and things like that, and you're trying to get value for your trade and. We've been involved in a few uh, that have fallen through that uh, would have been good for us, but these things happen, so we've got to continue to keep working at it. Uh, like Tab said, a lot of planning goes into it and getting organised for, for the start because we're going to be back early this year or next year. And But trying to add some pieces to, to the squad. Uh, I think we've retained a, a good portion of the team, so just trying to get stronger from there is, is the main focus at the moment. Awesome. Thank you. Well, let, you guys have some questions in front of you, so I'll let you guys go ahead. And, and James, if you want to ask Tab the first one, you can go there. All right. Okay, Tab. Uh, here we go. Uh, after your first full year as head coach of the club, uh, was there anything that surprised you? Or anything that you'll change about your approach heading into next year? Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's a good question. Yeah, of course. There's a lot of things that surprise me. You know, I learn a lot. Like I think, like I think we all do every year, maybe a little bit more for me since it was the first year in the league. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's some things that we'll do different going into next year. Uh, there's also the possibility of, of having a team with some different players next year, which will change the dynamic of who we are and, and how we play uh, and, and implementing what we want to implement uh, as a team. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's been a, it's been a it's been a good learning experience for me. It was quite a frustrating year. There were a lot of most of the games we played. We actually we dominated the games. We created tons of opportunities, and in the end, we we came out with a goal less, which is really the only thing that matters. Uh, and so we can't look for excuses for that. Uh, what we have to do is we have to get better. And whether that is you know you, you know the players, the staff, everybody, we just have to do a better job next year. Uh, and obviously not think of excuses and come into, uh, come into 2021 looking to, uh, to make the playoffs, which is what we want. Yeah, it's quite amazing, the, the learning curve of that first year. So uh, you know, I, I went through the same stuff and the, uh, that off-season comes and, and it's, you need a rest, but you've got to keep working because you, you, you're striving to get better. It, it's, it is really challenging and, uh, you know, it's... it's yeah, here. Here, here's year. the difference. Here's the difference. How many games did you guys play this year? We played 11. So you played 11 and you won more games than I won. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not so bad for you, the planning. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. Because I've got to make sure that, that wasn't luck. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, on the other side, I mean, the only place we can go is up from where we are. You know, so that's a good thing. <laughs> Yeah. I love that positive outlook. It's the only way. I guess so. I guess so. Well, uh, a little surprise to everybody, although obviously you and I knew that this was happening, uh, but this is a long-term planning type thing. What did you think in general of that new logo? I actually, I actually like it. Uh, it's, and I've, I've been around since the, since the first one. So, uh, you know, those, the, the whole nostalgia and stuff like that, I, I, I think it's actually a, a massive upgrade. I like it. I think it's going to look really good on on the apparel and 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 the look and the feel of it. And I, I think as we're heading into that that new era of the club, uh, I think it's quite fitting. And uh, yeah, I think the players like it, which ultimately for me is the main thing. So 
as long as they're happy and they're proud wearing it, that, that's, that's the most important thing. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I mean, I know that sometimes when there's change like that, fans feel like they lose their, I don't know if their culture or tradition a little bit. Uh, if you look back, you know, just a couple of years ago, Juventus changed their logo. I don't know if you remember that. And obviously, yeah. Juventus, you're talking about one of the most traditional clubs in the world. And they go after 100 years and they change their logo. Uh, and I know fans are up in arms, but, you know, within a year or two, the, the one thing that mattered the most was that the team got better. Uh, they started a new cycle that began with the new logo. And, uh, and now the fans are happy and they kind of, they kind of, that's something that they don't think about. I think the same thing happened at Atletico Madrid. Atletico Madrid did a change of logo as well after about 100 years. And, uh, you know, sometimes fans, obviously, they identify with who the team uh, was and where they come from. And I think it's the same case here. But there's, there's no question. Obviously, for me, it's maybe a little bit easier than for you because you've been at the club for much longer and you, can, you kind of identify likely a lot more than I did with the, with the logo that just went away. Um, but but the, the new logo is much nicer. I mean, it's much, it, you know, it's modern. It's, uh, it's, it's better streamlined. It's going to look better. Uh, and it's a, I think it's a first step into the future, which every club needs to take. So I, you know, I'm, I'm happy about it. Yeah, I, I think the important thing is we've kept the same colours yep. and we've kept the same name. So uh, obviously there's an FC on the, on the end of it. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I can't think either way on that because there's a lot of clubs. I think Montreal now is also switching uh, to Mon instead of Montreal Impact, they're switching to Montreal FC. Uh, there's a lot of FC and United going on, you know. So I, I don't know. I mean, either way for me, I mean, uh, obviously it, it identifies more with the world of football in general because obviously adding the FC and in particular adding the FC in Texas where American football is so big, it's, you know, can throw, you know, in terms of, you know, how the media handles that. Um, I'm not sure because I'm, you know, obviously I'm not, I'm not from Texas, uh, but I know that the football club part of it may be, uh, may be a little bit more difficult to handle for, uh, for people from Texas and media that's not necessarily, um, ha that, that has not necessarily been familiar, familiar with soccer the whole time. Um, but other than that, I mean, FC looks good to me because anywhere you go in the world, when you're signing players from overseas and, and all that stuff, the FC makes it a little bit more, real football to me yeah. so I, I like it yeah I, I i thought the the story behind it i thought it when when you hear that in terms of when the team arrived it literally was just a team of 24 players and over the 15 years the growth of the club and you know whether it's the academy the rgv uh, the dash all of the different aspects that have gone into it, it it is a real club and i think that's really important that everybody understands that and recognises it. So, yeah, it's, again, it's a, I think it's a small detail that in a very short period of time, fans, fans won't even worry about it. And it will be, like I said, I think the colour and the names that the, the most important part. And obviously the, the product on the field is ultimately what the fans are most interested about. And, you know, we go from there. So uh, here's one for you. Uh, if you were to go back... Is there a decision or a moment from a match that you would handle differently? One of those sliding door moments. Yeah, I mean that's uh, that's a tough one because I, you know, when you can when you when you can look back, I would hope that a lot of us can say, hey, if I would have done this a little bit different. I mean, you know, we we ended up losing a lot of games this year. Um, I wish I could tell you that I could change my mind on some of the games where we attack so much and risk losing in order to get a win and a tie, and then ended up losing by not mm -hmm. taking the tie. And I wish I could tell you that I would change that, but I, you know, I, I wanted to implement sort of a culture of everybody wanting to win games all the time, not settling for ties. Um, and so I wouldn't change that. But I think, I think there are certain moments where, where I think I have to be maybe a little bit more careful in terms of protecting a result likely on the road rather than being so aggressive all the time. I, again, I don't want to change the mentality of who we, we are trying to be. Um, but at the same time, there were, 
you know, there were a few games on the road that I would say that, that by being aggressive, maybe we took too many chances and that cost us. Um, and yeah, and I think we have to learn from that as we go into next year. Yeah. yeah. I had one in my first year. We were, we were at home. We were playing Portland. We were winning 1-0. It was in the summer. And I'm a huge believer. If, the, if we can get the 75th minute, and we're winning or tying, we'll win, we'll win the game. So we've just got to get the magic number for me is can we get the 75th minute? And it was about the 73rd minute and we had a player go one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, should have scored, kicked it straight at the goalkeeper, misses. I turned around to my assistant coach and said, oh, if we'd have scored that, we'd, we'd win the game. The goalkeeper boots it up the field. They score, 1-1. One -one. They kick off three minutes later. We're two one down and we lose the game. And uh, <laughs> I look at it and go, oh, some of these things are totally out of our control. And uh, one minute I was a hero, the next minute I was the villain. It's a uh, it's a uh, it's a tough game we're in. Yeah, that's the difficult part. That sometimes, no matter what, you can always look backwards and go, oh, okay, if we would have added an extra defender earlier. But you never know how things are going to turn out. Actually, sometimes you can be yeah, and I think a little bit like you where. You know, I want our team for like, whether it's 75 or 80 minutes to go as hard as we can to try to score as much as we can. And then the last 10 minutes, we got to lock it up and kick the ball into the stands. We'll do whatever it needs to, to get the result. Um, but, but, but then there's things happen along the way. And, and there's, sometimes there's nothing you can do, you know. And then you can look backwards and go, oh, if I would have made a substitute in the, in the 60th minute, we would have been fine. But... But then we, maybe we would have lost by more. I, you know, I don't know. Or maybe change now the dynamic of your team, but your team starting to think long term that you're being conservative because you're afraid that you're not going to win. And I don't want the team thinking that. I want the right. team thinking, we can win the whole time. Let's go, you know. Uh, and so, that, yeah, that's a tough one. And I would imagine so for, for you guys this year with, you know, because we had a bubble, right? We were in the bubble this year. And, and ours was, you know, obviously we went into the individual training and then to small group training and then to, to the team training. And then we went to the bubble in Orlando. And it seemed like in your season, you had the one bubble in Utah, right? And then, and then after that, there was a period of time, again, before you played games again. How did you, how did you manage that? Because it, was, it almost seemed like you had two separate seasons. Yeah, we had about, we had about four different pre-seasons this year. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> much to the disgust of the players, I can tell you. So uh, it, it, it was tough. Uh, I, I think initially when we went into the bubble, nobody thought we'd play any more games. Uh, and then when it finished, we, we gave the players a little bit of extra time off to, to recover mentally and physically from, from being away for basically five weeks. The, uh, and then the league said, hey, there's an opportunity to play some more games. So we had to get the players back in. We then had a preparation and then, then went into it. But, you know, we had a lot, we had a lot of meetings as a team and, and we discussed it. And, you know, I wanted their, their, the players' input and takeaways from the success that we had. What was it really all about and, and how did we do it and how are we going to continue to do it? And, and the biggest thing that collectively we came away from these meetings was it's really hard to win. And... It's really easy to be average because if you're average, nobody, nobody really cares. So, but in order to win, the effort and the time and the commitment that goes into all of it, all of the small details, that's the hardest thing. And it goes from the coaching staff to, to the players and the players coming to training every day and, and really pushing themselves to really try to get to another level. And you know, collectively as a group, if, if we play well as a group, we're good but we need seven, eight players every week on it because we don't have the, the, the world superstars that are going to dig us out of a hole if, if we're behind and they can do one bit of unbelievable magic to score goals or, or create chances. So we're, we're a real collective team. And to see their response when they came back, because it could have been quite easy to go, hey, we've, we've had a bit of success, we're, we're done for the year. The, the attitude, the effort, everything from the players, it, it was incredible to, to see. And it's quite inspiring that, that they could come back in, get back after it. And, and the performances arguably were better in the, in the full series than they were in the Challenge Cup. And that's really good for me because I, you know, I think we've had some success. We've played well. 
but I can look at the group and go, hey, we've done this and there's, a, there's still a, a huge ceiling for us. If, we're, if I can get another 20, 30% out of these players individually and collectively, we can push this to another level. And, you know, I'd be really worried if I'd have sat there and gone, we maxed out. I don't right. what well, I'm, I'm going to have to t- turn over the whole roster in order for us to, to continue. But I think all the players individually and collectively, there's, there's, there's a whole other level for us to get to. So that makes think- the planning really exciting. I think that's what was what was impressive, and and again, I didn't do I didn't do my homework here only so that this didn't look rehearsed. Me talking, <laughs> but I know that after no, because this happens with teams, right? So it's not like the Dash was used to winning the championship all the time. So having winning a title now becomes it becomes a burden. It's not easy. It's not easy. You win the title now, and now everybody's gunning for you instead of you being the underdog, right? So it's a little bit different. And I remember, again, I, I didn't do my homework, so I may get this wrong, but I, I think you went to North Carolina and had a game in North Carolina early. And yeah. I remember this game because I, I usually follow Paul Riley. I'm sort of a fan of, you know, the way he's, he's led his teams in the past because he's been really successful. And you got a result there. I don't know if it was like a – 3-3 three, three or 4-3, I don't remember. We got, we got beat 4-3 we there. Okay, it was something like that. But to, yeah. me, see, to me, I saw, I remember thinking of that game. And I don't, again, I didn't remember if we won or lost there. Uh, but I remember that as being a game where I thought, wow, this team is really for real. Because you go to a place like that, North Carolina is, is, a, is a very good team. And it's after North Carolina being the number one seed at the tournament and then getting knocked out, right? Mm-hmm. And then now you have to meet them. You know, and, and I thought, wow, this is the time where North Carolina is really going to put a stamp and say, no, this is who we are. And they couldn't do that that day, although they won the game. And I remember thinking how impressive that was because I can imagine that that, that had to be really difficult to travel there and, and, and play that type of game back and forth. Yeah, that was, that was an interesting trip because we were supposed to play the Friday night. We, we leave Thursday and when we arrive at the airport, the league's asked us if we can move the game to Saturday. So we actually end up having to spend an extra day in North Carolina. All of the arrangements go out, but that was just par for the course for 2020. Right. And we just had to deal with it, get on with it. And uh, yeah, it, 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 disappointing loss. But that, I, that was sort of a moment where you go, the team has made progress because although we got beat, we've gone there, we've scored three goals, we've created a ton of chances. But to see how annoyed and upset the players were after the game, knowing that they'd let one slip away. And I thought, well, there's a different attitude about this group that this is a major step forward for us. So, and they got that on through the whole full series. So, really pleased with them. You know, the players were excellent. Yeah, that was, uh, I, I thought that that was big. Again, it's not like I, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I see every result or I follow every game, you know, and I watch every game, but I knew that that would be a difficult challenge against that team uh, because they do have a winning mentality there. Oh, they- incredible, uh, incredible. And, and that's when, when I say winning's hard, to see a team like that that's, that's a serial winner, that's won consistently and performed at the highest levels for four or five years, it's hats off to them. It, it's a real incredible achievement. And, uh, Hopefully, we, we can get to those sorts of levels over the next couple of years. Yeah. So, talking about the bubble, yeah. what's the hardest thing for you being in the bubble? The hardest thing um, w- was really uh, just being away, having all the players being away from their families. You know, we had a couple of players who had, whose, you know, wives were pregnant. Uh, and so they had to monitor that situation. Uh, we had one of our players at the time, Christian Ramirez, is wife was having a baby so he had to leave and then come back and then be quarantined when he was back um that was difficult at the same time you know we were going into a tournament after having lost 4-0 in Kansas City in in uh in March so our, you know we had to live with a 4 nothing loss for about for about 4 or 5 months before we got on the field so that was difficult uh, because we almost over prepared to play the tournament and, uh, but overall, I was happy with the team's response. We were unlucky not to get a couple wins and go to the next round. We, we gave up a penalty against the Galaxy in the 90th minute that, you know, in a game that we ended up, obviously ended up, you know, we were winning 1-0 until that penalty and they tied us 1-1 and knocked us out of the tournament where we should have advanced. 
So overall, although we didn't, we had two ties and a loss in the tournament. I was happy with the way the team played because we could have won all three games and we created chances to win all three and we had a really difficult group. Uh, so overall, I thought, you know, the, the, the team, the players and the staff handled, handled the whole situation really well. I was, uh, I was happy. I was happy with that. Right. Excellent. And so, and so as we go to, as we go to now, obviously, you know, the, the end, hopefully at some point, you know, and it may be, I think it may be not after in this off season because COVID's still around and, and we still don't know there's the uncertainty of when our season is going to start. So I imagine that you have the same um, because there's no final decisions yet on our end and particular date when we're going to start the next season. I personally can't wait until we have a, a regular world and we can, uh, and we can live normally. And then uh, hopefully next season we'll have a great season. We'll be in the playoffs and we'll win the championship. That's how I see 2021. And then I'm hoping to go on a, on a vacation for at least a week somewhere. <laughs> you had a, obviously you guys won this year. Um, and hopefully next year we can go back to a regular world and we can all go on vacation. So if you had to choose somewhere to go, where would you go? Well, uh, uh, if, if my wife watches this, I'll tell her that we want to go to Barbados and spend the whole time here in Barbados on the beach with, with my wife. If she doesn't watch it, uh, Glasgow Rangers are going to win the league this year for the first time in 10 years. They, they are, I'm convinced. They are the coach still, right? Eh? Yes. Yeah. And I really want to take my son to watch them play at the end of the season. So I'm desperate for the... NWSL uh, schedule to come out because if there's an open weekend and COVID's gone, we're going and we're going to watch that and see them uh, stop Celtic winning 10 in a row. That's what it's all about for me this year. <laughs> it, took, hey, it, you? It, took them, it took them a long time. I mean, it was a long road to get to where they are now. It's been a long road for the last how many years since they got relegated and how many years? It's, it's, been, it's, it's been eight years. So uh, that's why I look so old. The stress of following a team like that uh, is, uh, is pretty hard work. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I feel the pain every week. So my two teams, Glasgow right. Rangers and Houston Dynamo. So uh, right, 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 right. I've still got some hair. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know. Especially if you were rooting for us, it was a tough one. <laughs> Yeah, hey, yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not funny. Definitely not funny because I, I, I felt like I aged a lot myself this year. But, uh, but it's all part of learning. And look, at the end of the day, I feel very fortunate to be in my position uh, to be coaching Houston Dynamo, and I appreciate that every day. So I don't take it for granted. One day, I may be having a little fun with it sometimes because this is life. After all, every day we're living a day in our life. So it's not like we're getting this one back. Uh, right. Regardless of whether we win or lose, we're not getting it back. Uh, but I do have a lot of respect for the position I'm in, and I and I take it incredibly seriously. And and I really want to win. I mean, because otherwise, why come down here if it's not for just for winning and lifting the trophy? There's nothing that I would want more. Um, but yeah, for me, I know you were asking me that if I had to go on vacation. I, geez, I, I don't even know. I don't even. I haven't had a vacation in easily. I mean, easily 15 years. I haven't had a vacation. <laughs> I don't, I'm just not big into going, you know, like if we, if we went on vacation, I'm not saying we haven't had a weekend somewhere. Um, but for me, like after, after a full day of sitting on the beach somewhere, like I could maybe stretch it the day and a half. And then I, I got to get, I got to get moving. I got to do something. I, I can't, you know, it's just, it's definitely not for me. I can tell you that. Not for me. Maybe when I'm really old, um, but not for me. <laughs> Yeah, really. How do you feel? How do you feel now going into next year? Um, with you know, what do you you know? You said you're looking at some trades. So obviously, you know, as we want wind down ourselves, you know, we we have to do our, our you know, you have to start with what players leave, uh, and then according to who leaves, then what players uh, have interest from other clubs in terms of trade. Some clubs are calling about certain players, so you start to fit the pieces. Uh, but there's always that underlying place, right? That culture of, that you want to build, right? So it's, it's players into a position, but it's also players who want to fit into, into your culture. And I remember you mentioning to me last time how important ambition was to you. 
um, and, and with the players you bring in. So w what are some of the other qualities um, that, that you'll be looking for to add? Because now you're adding from a different place. Now you're a winning team. And you're, you're, you know, you're a team that everybody's shooting for. So what kind of, what kind of quality are you looking for from a, from a person and a player? I think, uh, like I said, we're a collective team. So the personality of the player is massive. And, you know, we spent a lot of time last year working on values. Uh, what's important for the players, what's important for the staff, what's important for the dash, how we want the dash to be seen the behaviours and stuff that we want to see on the field, off the field. And we spent a ton of time with that. And I think that really helped us through the whole process of going through the different pre-seasons, playing in the different tournaments, all of the, the ups and downs of the year and all of the other stuff that's going on within the world, dealing with that for the players and, and all of us involved. Having those values and being able to go back to them when we needed it as a reset was, was really important. So having good people, is is massive for us and even if there if there were two players we were looking at and, and one was better but wasn't as good a person as the other one I'd take I'd take the good person every day so then they'd fit in with with the culture that we're trying to get but once we've got through whether they're good people or not I think they've got to be a, they've got to want to enjoy running and defending uh, and if they enjoy those two then they'll fit in with us and, and they'll be a success and I think uh, those two qualities are massive, but you, you see that in how we play and, and that's all part of, of who we are, what we are, and that's that collective spirit is when you see the response of the players when we lose the ball, their, their hunger and their desire to want to win it back, it shows that they're invested in the team. They're not just about themselves. And uh, that, that, those things are, are huge. And I think having a good team chemistry, good team spirit, that gives us an extra... 10% when we play and when those games are really tight that's the little bit extra that will get us over the line and, and, and get us a win so making sure we have the right people fit into the into the group and make it stronger not just keep it where it is but continue to push it on I, I think is vitally important so when we go through this process and you know we've got we've got the draft coming up in January as well getting that opportunity to meet these players talk to these players before the draft or while we go through the recruitment process, uh, getting a feel for who they are as, as people and doing my homework on what, what the character's like, how do they train, how do they deal with not being selected, all, the, all these things that, that go into it uh, are vitally important. And hopefully we get, we get it right more than we get it wrong. We're, we're not always going to get it right. But as long as we get, get good people in there, then we can keep that culture and, and move that culture forward. And that's, I think, I think that's a good thing. And, you know, this one thing I noticed about this club from the moment I, you know, I arrived. And again, I'm new and you've been here for a long time. But these are the good things that I, that I personally like to hear because, you know, the club is sort of, we're moving in the direction, you know, where we want to become and we are becoming, and I think we are, you know, one club. And whether that's, you know, whether that's the men's team or the women's team or, or you know, any other, the academy, uh, and I think we all come in together. But one thing I can tell you is, you know, the, same, the answer that you gave me now, if I were to talk to, you know, Paul Holliker, the academy director, or Kenny Bundy, the pre-professional coach, um, or many other coaches within the academy, or if I, if I talk to uh, one of our staff members, whether it's my assistants, Omid Namazi, or Pablo Mastrani, or I talk to people who work at the stadium, um, or people who are in the marketing department or ticket sales. And it seems to me like the whole club has sort of this, this, this demeanor about it that it seems like everybody really cares about the club and everybody's interested in, in the club doing well as a whole. And that's, you know, it's really good to hear because I think as human beings, we always want to want to be part of something bigger than we are. And, and I think we're, I feel fortunate enough to, to be in that situation. And I think we, we both are in that situation where we, we are defending the colors of an important club, of an important city, a huge city. And, uh, and I think uh, obviously that, you know, we're, you know, I know you, you are, you, you were successful this year. I'm sure you'll be even more successful next year. Hopefully we can imitate some of that success going into next year. That's certainly what we're shooting for. Uh, but it's good to be part of a picture of, uh, of a good set of people like that. And, uh, and that's why, you know, I, 
thank you for being on the on this conversation with me. Um, and I know that the club, you know, is is always interested in us doing something together. And and we definitely have to we definitely have to catch a meal together. We've been saying we're going to do it, but COVID <laughs> yeah. is not really allowing us. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> But I really enjoy these conversations and it, it kind of puts me in, you know, helps me to put me in a good place about the club and where we are and where we're going from here because things are going to get better and, uh, and I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm actually much funnier in person than, than on Zoom. It's, uh, <laughs> and when I haven't got a mask on, it, it, it gets even better. So uh, can't wait for that. So we look forward to that in 2021. Yeah. The, uh, well, I've, got, I've got one or two more for you. Uh, and this goes in line with what we were just talking about in, the t in terms of the club and uh, good people and things like that. What off the field things have impressed impressed you the most this year with your team? Uh, some of the, you know, there, there's a lot of players that do that do charity work. There's players that work a lot with the club. Uh, players like Zarek that, you know, he dedicates himself to trying to to make the club better every day and whether that is uh, by helping people um, outside the club in the name of the club, whether that is, you know, doing marketing with the Dash uh, women's team or, or whatever that is. I know that we have players that really feel, fit into that culture of making the club better. And I think that's, uh, I'm really proud of that. Really proud of bringing guys who are willing to make the club better um, on the field, obviously, which is which is the most important, and off the field as well for the long-term benefit of the club. Yeah, excellent. I think it's the same. Uh, I think it's the same with the Dash. I, I think they're really invested in the in the community. But when you actually see both teams as as one doing doing things together, I, I think that's really impactful and, and powerful. And you know, I think these players uh, are incredible role models and can have. And will and do and will continue to have massive impact in the community. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, what's the here's my last one? Because uh, we've been in lockdown, we've been in a bubble. Yeah. Uh, what's the best movie or show you've watched this year? Oh wow! Um, best movie or show? Hey, man, I've seen so much. <laughs> it is to pick something. Um, uh, I'm trying to think best movie or show. I, I don't know. I can't come up with one that I think uh, would be one that has stood out. The year has been so long with so many things that I've watched that I don't, I don't think I can come up with one. I, I don't know. I have no idea. No have, idea. You, have you seen Maradona in Mexico? Yes. Yes. That, that was the best show for me this year. Absolutely <laughs> incredible. It's kind of crazy, but yeah. They need to watch it. Brilliant show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 